Welcome back, boys and girls, and we are here to talk again about Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, and unfortunately, this time I'm a bit more conflicted than I was last time. You see, a test screening for the movie was held a while back, and the Resident Evil update Twitter uh, posted some information that has come from that, you know, sent to them by people who attended the screening. And I've kind of been sitting on it, just kind of stewing, and so, I don't know. But let's just kind of get into this. By the way, huge spoilers, huge, massive spoilers. The biggest piece of info that everybody's kind of focusing on, and for good reason, is that apparently Jill Valentine and Wesker will be in a relationship in this movie. Which is one of those big character changes that could easily affect the story. But yeah, obviously, in the original Resident Evil and the Resident Evil remake, Wesker was only ever using the STARS team. So for him to be in a relationship with a member of the team, that right there, it potentially makes him more human. But at the same time, it could also potentially make him even more manipulative. It depends on how the relationship plays out in the movie. And when it comes to that, all the Twitter account has said is that their relationship is quote-unquote interesting. Which could mean many things. They're, they obviously seem to be trying to avoid spoiling everything for people, which I can understand. Now, something else I kind of need to talk about in order to kind of continue with this line of thinking, is that the movie apparently is going to set up a sequel, but not the sequel you would expect. They're essentially skipping to Code Veronica after this, rather than going to Resident Evil 3. And, you know, thinking ahead in terms of where the story can go and where the story went in the games with Wesker and Jill being in a relationship at this early point, it could potentially lead to a very, very interesting, but also dark take on Resident Evil 5's story. Now that was dark enough in the original game, but with new context, you know, it uh, it's adding layers to the characters that I can I can appreciate while at the same time being a bit wary of. So I can't really say this change is negative, you know, right off the bat. It depends entirely on how they do it. But honestly, the characters in the Resident Evil games are... They're blank slates in a way. Like, even though they've appeared in, you know, multiple games and we've spent a lot of time with several of these characters, we don't know like who they are personally in a way you know because the characters chris and jill specifically they are always mission focused this could be a great way to kind of get in their heads a little bit so i'm going to try to remain cautiously optimistic on this on other stuff not so much I think a lot of people were worried about this movie when it was said that it was going to cover the events of Resident Evil 1 and 2 because that means that a lot is going to have to be dropped, skipped over, condensed, you know, however you want to put it. Unfortunately, I knew that characters were going to be dropped left and right. And that is a good way to mess up where things should go, where fans want them to go. And so I'll just say flat out, Rebecca is not in this movie, according to the Twitter account. She is not in this movie. She doesn't exist. I wasn't able to see anything said about Barry. So there's still hope there, but he still seems to be, to me at least, still seems to be replaced by Richard Aiken in, in Welcome to Raccoon City, which would be extremely unfortunate. But more than that, the biggest thing that is gonna make people go what the hell is that ada wong is not in this movie aside from at the very 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 end and as pivotal as she is in the storyline of resident evil 2 and as essential as she is to leon's story and character progression 
Well, I'm not going to say character progression. I've I've said I don't like Leon in the games very much, and he's kind of stuck in this Batman-Catwoman relationship back and forth thing where he doesn't actually progress as a character. He just kind of, you know what? That's that's a that's another can of beans right there. Point is, she's essential to the story of Resident Evil 2, and she ain't here. Aside from a role at the very, very end. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think they even said it was a post credit scene. And that she's being set up for an important storyline, but not in this movie. Also, uh, Mr. X, or Tyrant, however you want to, to call him, is also not in this movie. Nor is the Tyrant in the Resident Evil 1 portion of the movie. You know, like the OG Tyrant. Not here. The only villains, quote unquote villains or monsters, if you, whatever you want to call them, are Lisa Trevor and William Birkin. And while Birkin is said to go through multiple transformations, it's still... Oh, and I guess there's a liquor. A singular liquor. <laughs> Fuck me. So yeah, these are the biggest points from what I read on this Twitter account, and... I've seen other things online here and there that I couldn't find a source for, such as somebody said they saw the, the movie at the screening and that Jill is not a member a member of STARS. She is a standard police officer for the RPD. I can't find a source for that, so I don't know if it's true. And in fact, in the most recent promo image released, you can see that the outfit Jill is wearing has the STARS logo on the front. It's kind of covered up by her hand and the gun she's holding, but you can, you can, if you, if you, if you squint and, and you look hard enough, you can, you, you can, you can see it. So I'm trying real hard to stay cautiously optimistic about this movie. I, I, I need this to be good, man. It's, <sighs> I, I need this movie to be good, but. The more we see about it, or not, or not see, I guess, since we're we're not that far from the release date, and there's still no trailer released as of the time of this recording, which is extremely concerning. But from this info that I've kind of relayed within this video, it's like, you know, how do you leave out Ada and Barry? Although he's not integral to the story in the first game he he's a fan favorite character and he could also you know like just having a character in there for some light humor you know throwing in a dad joke here and there trying to boost the morale of of his fellow stars members you know it I, there there could have been a, a good role there for him but I'll admit there are some good things that I've seen here too, like the fact that supposedly the majority of the creatures and effects are done practically rather than using CGI, which I am a huge advocate for. To me, The Thing is a timeless classic horror movie with its disgusting practical effects whereas the more recent prequel to the thing also called the thing is not timeless at all has horrible cgi that uh, point is the the practical effects kind of pique my interest a bit the fact that chris and claire my top two favorite resident evil characters are the protagonists in this movie that uh, that gives me some hope as well but I don't know. There's there's a there's a lot to be worried about. There's a lot to like. I can't blame anybody for not giving the studio <laughs> the benefit of the doubt, especially after they made so much money off of those god awful Resident Evil action movies. But that's uh, that's a topic for another day. Thanks guys for watching. Hopefully we'll be back soon to talk about a trailer. Like and subscribe, or not. That's cool. I'm baffled.